I think it might. I think Twitter might be down. So let's see if it's on Periscope. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, nah, Twitter's on, like, down, bro. Only only DMs are open. Right. I just want to make sure it's on YouTube. Yeah. I know it's not on Twitter. Okay. All right. So we are we're live on YouTube. We're live on YouTube. That's cool. Unless unless Twitter's up and running. No, we're we're good. We're live on YouTube. Bam. Cool. Live on YouTube. Live on YouTube. All right. What's going on, people? You probably know the guy next to me, the guy with the second best hair in the Giants fan base. License plate guy. What's going on, my man? First of all, my friend, if you only would have just kept it, you 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 just succumb to the to the pressure, bro, and you just cut. I know it's making a comeback, but there's no reason for it to there's no reason for it to have been gone. Well, credit to me. The last two guy times we've had you on anything, I had cut my hair like three days before. <laughs> and it almost it almost seemed like I was doing it on purpose. But now that I'm not working out, like working outside in the Florida sun, man, it would get all over and it's in my I eyes. Know. And I look like an idiot while I'm working. So right now it's in like the Afro stage. Shout out Afro Skinner. Yeah, but you, it, it's making you a comeback. Definitely, it definitely doesn't look bad now. No, definitely not. I keep the hairbrush next to the next to the camera. You know, <laughs> got to got to keep it going. Um. So, anyways, leave your guys' comments. We'll try and get to them. Uh, man, I'll start out with you. You're a positive person. I mm -hmm. I'm a positive person. There's times where I'll be negative, and there's if there's something I dislike, I really dislike it. How are you dealing with 0 and 5 though, man? It feels like it's the third time we've been 0 and 5 in the last, you know, six, seven years. So, so here's the deal. First, I want to start off by saying, you know, I don't appreciate <clears throat> you stealing my, you know, giant 77, the opponents, nothing. I've been doing that for a lot longer than you. I, I, I don't you appreciate have. I don't appreciate you stealing that. You know, it happens a lot on Twitter, but you know, just be careful because a lot of people are watching. So, you know, when you steal content, you know, shame on you, pal. But, uh, <laughs> hey, I've, I'm learning my lessons. I'm learning my lessons. I, I see you are, and I see some sarcasm as well. But anyway, it's, it's becoming extremely difficult to even stay a homer. Uh, you know, 0-5 is a killer. I really haven't posted a lot about you know, they played well, though, because yeah. that's not the window. That's enough already. Um, how many times can you say that when you're 0-1 and 0-2? Yeah, it did feel a little different. It felt like a cool 0-2. It wasn't the same old, same old. 0-5? Yeah, you're not going to get that from me anymore. No, no. Enough's enough. Uh, what's bothering me is, I, I don't know, I just don't, I, I don't see a, a, a great future this year. And even if the Giants come away with a, you know, a four or five victory season, which I still believe is 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 doable, I do. Uh, it's it's not good enough. It's not good enough, and it better not be good enough to save some jobs. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like you said, it's been frustrating. Like we try to find the pauses, and we do Tuesday, Wednesday. Like, hey, look at this player. Good, this player looked good. And then it's like, look, Daniel Jones wasn't as bad as people make it out to be. All right, uh, before we'll get, we'll answer some questions. I like this one from my guy, Danny King, LPG and Walmart version LPG. Love to see it. <laughs> I think that was how we Danny, were introduced. Danny's was, a funny guy. I follow him. He's a funny dude. Um, so we've had Eli for the last 17 years. There's been no, oh, uh, we need, you know, there's been move on questions, but it's like Eli's the guy, though. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Now that this is Daniel Jones year two, there's heat on him. Well, there's, you know, there's some deserve, and obviously, every, like everything, it goes a little overboard sometimes, too. How are you navigating, like, what are your thoughts on, one, Jones, and then, two, like, is this normal? Because I, you know, I'm only 28, so yeah. Kerry Collins to Eli Manning was my first QB change. Yeah, that's 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 funny. Uh, uh, you know, my, my I have a 17-year-old daughter, same thing, like, she was just yay big, when they won and now she's like dad why you know they your team stinks i'm like shut up but anyway like <laughs> you know you want my straight up opinion of jones i mean everybody laughs when you you know stick up for a giants player and and, and the hate goes on twitter or wherever and says you know why are you stick it up for me sucks first of all he doesn't suck he's actually pretty damn good he yeah. has the arm strength he has everything he's trying to make plays he's running for his life Listen, you, you talking Giants, just all you, all you guys 
that put out all these numbers. I personally can't stand it. I don't care that, you know, this guy's over here getting rid of the ball at 2.1. And this guy, if you only had 2.3, it would be better. That's all, I, I, you know, that kind of content is awesome for nerds sitting in the bottom of the basement that Man, really you're just trashing me all hold, day. No, today. No, hold on. Hold on. Let me finish my point. You know, but but then then you guys get into the specifics of why it's important. And that's what I'm I'm getting at. Daniel Jones is a good quarterback, Bobby. He is probably going to be a franchise quarterback. The reason why I just didn't jump on and say a Giants franchise quarterback is because so he just finished the whole season, right? What has he got? 17 games under his, under his belt? Yeah. All right. So he's got 17 games. The guy is running for his life, and he has limited weapons. I'm being nice. Limited weapons. What happens, Bobby, when the Giants, who are in the first spot of the draft, what happens if and when they reach, reach the end of the season and a Trevor Lawrence is sitting there. Because I want to get into that with you. I want to get into it, Daniel J Jones versus Trevor Lawrence. It's not toss him aside. It's not Trevor Lawrence is good or not good. It's the point of the Giants picking a generation, because we throw that around like it's nothing, a generational talent can't miss prospect in Trevor Lawrence. It's not casting Daniel Jones aside. It's kind of what the Cardinals did. They had the shot at Murray and they took it only a year later. What do the Giants do? Do you go get a King's Ransom, which they really need, and build around Jones, and in five years realize it wasn't right? Or do you go and you pick Lawrence? What do you do? Because that will tell me how you feel about Jones. My gut says to take the King's Ransom. Obviously, the, uh, the, the other side of that is like, well, if we're if we have the first pick, that means Jones played us into the the worst the worst pick, which I get, which I get. But we're also not in that situation, so it was it's all these weird hypotheticals. So what I'll say is, one like Trevor Lawrence, he obviously has all the arm talent. Like he has like awesome arm talent. He's accurate. The thing for me is like I've never seen him do good against good like against equal competition. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, the last time we that. saw him against <laughs> LSU, he was garbage. He was horrible in that game. So that's why it's like when there's these highlights and stuff, it's like that doesn't do that doesn't sway me one way or the other. It's what do you do under pressure? And that was kind of the advantage that Jones had playing at Duke is like we got to see this guy struggle through everything. You know, like there's no like what happens True. when it gets to, like it got easier. Like his numbers jumped up by like 10 percent when he got to the NFL. So that's my thing. So I, I, I probably would uh would do the trade down right now. Uh, I, me, and I me, believe in him. I believe in him. Like I, 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 I do as well. But let me. Let me ask you some an important question. What is a king's ransom to you? And, I, and I'll tell you what it is to me. What what is a king's ransom to you? If either a first round pick in the top five from that year, a first from the next year, and like you know second, third stuff like that, or if it's someone that's coming up from like twelve or something, then like three first round picks and some other stuff, you know. Okay, so I actually was thinking the same. I, I would need multiple picks in the first two rounds for many years. Yep. I mean, that's a, that's a King's ransom. Get what Especially, the Rams got from Washington for RG3. Yes, yes. That is, that is what I would like to see because I mean, at the end of the day, giants have many holes. They're still, we're still sitting here a year, two, three, four, five, six, seven years later, talking about the line. Same, same issue. Um, the giants need a receiver or two. They need a, a, a big body. Um, the Giants have some holes that they need to fill. Yeah. Um, so Offensive that's coordinator. A, <laughs> all right. So let's switch gears because I, well, let, I don't want to talk before about Before we too. get into that, let's answer this one because it, <laughs> it is a Q&A. So I, I just put it up on the screen. OGR Sports, thank you for the donation. He says, to me, a lot of the last eight years go on ownership. Do you think they're capable of making the correct decisions going forward? I do not. Either way, guys, enjoy the content regardless. So I'll, I'll let you take that out of the way since you've been watching this a lot longer than I have. Yeah, that's actually a, that's a pretty good question, I, and I appreciate it as well. And uh, I like how we ended it, you know, regardless, whatever, however you feel about it. Um, 
Uh, listen, uh, Bobby, you and I are going to agree to disagree. I don't see a lot of I, I don't see a lot of onus. I'm putting the uh, the problems on ownership. Um, I know that the owners make some decisions and they have to put the right people in place. And those people have to make the decisions of the people that are under them. Uh, but what what's the mistakes that the ownership has done? Hold on. Is it letting Eli go a little bit too long or not building around him when they could? Was it the McAdoo? Was it the Shermer? Was it bringing DJ back? Like, I mean, DG back. What, what do you, and I'm asking you, how do you put problems on ownership? Well, I'm actually pretty similar where I don't, I like a lot of people just, and that's the way New York is. I don't hate the mayors. I, you know, you know, when John took over, they ended up winning two Super Bowls pretty quickly with Eli Manning. Now I yep. get that, you know, that was Wellington was the guy when that when that all went down. But they won two with that guy, and they won two with Jerry Reese as a GM. I know that mm -hmm. Wellington drafted the first team, or, or Ernie of course he drafted right. the first team. But Jerry Reese was the GM for those two years, those two Super Bowls. So I don't look at them holding on to those guys a little too long as like some grave sin. You know what I'm seeing? Like, yeah. I, I get that it's the NFL is not supposed to be a family business, but I would always rather have those guys than the way the Chargers do something where Philip Rivers finds out he's gone through a tweet and, yeah. and they do stuff like where it's like, oh, it's just pure business. I would rather have the mayors than the way the Chargers do things. Um, where they've went wrong, I think the biggest thing is getting things off schedule. So where they fired um, Coughlin but then kept Reese. And then they, they fired Coughlin just to upgrade everybody in the entire organization up just one spot. It's like if you did That's that, correct. what was the point of doing that if you only meant to bring him up one spot? And when they fired Coughlin, I said, cool, if, you get, if you're going out and getting your guy like Sean Payton. They didn't. They just moved everybody up one spot. And then they clean house. And then this past year, I said either keep both Gettleman and Shermer or fire both of them. And then they kept, they, they kept Gettleman and fire Shermer. So that right, those so, are my big things on ownership. And you know what? And and everybody should be clapping their hands for your for your answer, to be honest with you. That was spot on. Um spot on. But I at the end of the day, and, and I'm in complete agreement, I was gonna bring up the fire, keep one, not the other, keep one, not the other. Okay, everybody moves up one, which is kind of funny. It's kind of I, I've been calling it the Tom Quinn syndrome because the Giants Tom Quinn seems to have nine lives or some pornographic material on the Maras or something because they'll never let him go, you know? And, and I know that we throw around the term lifers, but that's kind of what the giants are into. They have lifers there. They have people in that organization that will never let go. What's going to happen to this fan base when they, <laughs> when they, fired DG, which they will. Yeah. And I could give you arguments to keep them not, in, not having enough time, um, screwing up some draft picks, but hitting on free agency. Like I could give you both. Uh, but I do believe he's the fall guy. He's the last, he's the last to go. What's going to happen when they put Kevin Abrams in there? See, everyone says that. I don't think they're going to do that because when they fired Reese, like you said, it was like coming off of some good years. So like, let's bring in back in Gettleman who was with us has been a good talent of like, if you know, for the most part, he's been a good talent evaluator. People will point out misses because we lose, but nonetheless, he has like, even statistically, there's been like, an like analytics on it that like, he is a, he, he drafts pretty good. Um, there's been, obviously people will bring up Saquon. People will bring up some stuff, but anyways, for the most part, <laughs> but now that it's like, okay, we tried doing the in-house family thing. And it didn't work. I just I would be blown away if they're like, "Hey, we're gonna do that again." Because I, I don't. He's a he's a tremendous numbers guy. He's tremendous. And 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 I know just on the inside, like speaking to some players that are like, "Well, that wouldn't have got done without Abrams. That wouldn't have, you know this wouldn't have happened without Abrams." So, you know, I maybe have a little bit more knowledge when it comes to that piece. Right. Uh, I would I would find it very difficult for the Giants to let him walk. I mean, look. Wasn't he going to Detroit a few years ago when everything 
broke. I think he had a maybe just had an interview with them and and the Giants wanted to keep him. And, you know, when when somebody wants to leave or go get another interview and they're kept, it means they're kept because they have a future. Right. So this team was decent this year. I I would I would say, yeah, I think they're going to do that. But zero and five and four at starting out like this and no matter how you finish whether it's four or five wins unless it's a total turnaround miracle we make the playoffs then i don't i don't think you can do that i just maybe i i might be being naive i just don't think they're gonna do that so hey look you, you turn around and make the playoffs a one game out you might have saved dg's job <laughs> yeah uh, it's true could you imagine when you go to the playoffs you and and lose uh first round you firing dg no, that wouldn't happen, but we're not going to go through the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to talk about that either. <laughs> That's great. Oh, <laughs> man. Um, so off of that, sorry. Let me let me see if there's any questions we can get to in there. Off of that, now they fired Dave Gelman. Would you be cool with them firing Judge? Because I, whatever okay, GM they on. win, I would say, I would say do what you want to do, whether that's awesome. fire everyone, awesome. do whatever he wants. Great. I do. I have a – I have a man crush on Judge, but I'm not in love. Meaning he has not earned that from anybody yet, or he shouldn't have. Do I like his style? I freaking love it. Yeah. Do I like that he has not lost any part of that locker room or, or lost any single player? I love that. He's a football coach. He's a man's man. He answers questions well. He's the, one of the brightest coaches on the on the board. Besides you and Justin, he is by far the smartest dude when it comes to the numbers. So <clears throat> on that piece, I love him. But here we are again, the two freaking blondes uh, totally agreeing because if if Gettleman gets fired and a new GM comes in and they want to get rid of Judge, bye. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> with you. And if he wants to get – you know, I like Jones. I believe in Jones. Um, I, I've, I, what I've been saying is whoever the QB is next year, they, they can't have Jason Garrett as their offensive coordinator. That's kind of my line right now. But like you said, whoever the GM is like, it needs, I believe it should be an outside guy. Do what you think's best. No, yeah. out, no, no team saying you have to do this. You have to do this. Let him do what he thinks best. Whether yeah. that's firing Joe judge, firing Joe judge, whether that's moving on from Daniel Jones and moving on from Daniel Jones, as much as I love the kid. Yeah. Um, let, uh, let the GM right. come in and build. His team. If you believe he's the best man for the job, let him do his thing. But let's just hope we could keep Patrick Graham around because I think he's a genius. He, he's very, he's very. I, you and I spoke about this, and I said, watch how many schemes this guy. He's good. Yeah, Patrick, he's a genius. Patrick Graham dude. is good. I know you have a man crush on him. I know you. Do. I do. So, look, I as a Giant fan, and I know I have some years on you. As a Giant fan. You know, the Giants have never been a dynasty. And it's a shame because they've had the tools a long time ago to maybe put it together. But they've never been such a great team ever. They've had spurts. They've had Super Bowl runs. But they've never had a dynasty. And I don't know. I, I, I want them to build one. And I'm tired yeah. of sitting here for year in and year out I mean, holy cow, they're terrible. They've been terrible for so long. I, I refuse to believe that they're the bottom of the basement in the NFL, but they are. Yeah. So go and get some young, not too young, not 28. Go get a young 29. GM. <laughs> go get a young GM that is modernized in, in, in the NFL and and – you know, knows what's going on, involved in the day-to-day -day coaching and activities and and knows what it's like for the college football player and sees talent and understands modern football. And I just don't think that we have that now. And I, I believe that the players are very different than they were years ago. And they want to be able to have that relationship with yeah. the GM, not just some old dude. And I, I think front offices are younger too because of one, because of this digital, the digital age where back in the day to go up is like you had to be at practice every day learning about like it took time where yeah. now 
you could just spend all day like studying different like stuff like that. It's just right at your fingertips. You don't need to have Nick Saban, you know, ship you in the mail yeah. grainy footage of cover, you know, this coverage and this stuff he's tried. So that's um that stuff. Speaking of the ball in the basement, check this out, license plate guy. Just dropping in to say thanks for your weekly Browns on this year's tackle class. You're the man, Grow Browns. Could you imagine that a Browns fan would be giving me five dollars after the way that I trashed the Cleveland Browns last year? Could you could you imagine where we're at in this world that that is what is happening right now? I I can because people do crazy things when they didn't when they're sitting on top of the NFL. <laughs> I could. Oh man, I. I, and I don't even, I'm not even sold on Baker yet. I think he's got it. I think he has it made right now over in Cleveland. But we man, said, we, we, said I, that, we said that last year. He had it yeah. made with those weapons. They didn't do shit with them. But this yeah. year he's putting it together. And OBJ, I don't care what anybody says out there. You know my stance on that. I was texting with him the, the, the other day and he goes, I'll just tell you his quote LPG, imagine I was the problem. I was like, all right, relax, OBJ. I'm like, <laughs> I'll rip out, show it to you right now. He said, I said, relax. I'm like, you didn't help yourself here, but damn, I miss you. I miss you, bro. That's funny. That's funny. All right. What do we got in here? Um, see, this is Stephen Lim said, I heard someone say that excluding the Super Bowl, the Giants are a pretty bad franchise. Well, yeah. Excluding, just- excluding my house, I'm homeless. <laughs> hey, that's a great answer. Steven's right, though. We just talked about that. They're not. They're not a dynasty football team. But I think I will. I think I'll live with that because they have four freaking Super Bowls. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have four Super Bowls. That's a that's a ton of Super Bowls. So he's right. But at the end of the day, you know, nothing, nothing beat those four runs. It could have been five. I don't know. You know, I, nothing could have beat the Ravens defense. But but the four Super Bowl runs. We're magical, magical. Yeah, yeah. I'd always say I, championships over everything. Cha- over everything. Being able to, like I'm a Nets fan, and I don't love KD. I don't love Kyrie, but I view them as win me a freaking championship. So as a Nets fan, I can say I've won a championship, and then go do whatever you want. The Nets yeah. can be horrible, like they've been their entire existence, besides the early 2000s. I don't care as long as I can say. Yeah, well, guess what? My team's won a championship. We won a championship. Yeah. I got to witness a championship. Uh, Championships I, I, are the I, only I, thing that matters. Every time you bring, every time you post something about the Nets or like something, if you know, we had this conversation. But don't forget, I was, I was, I babysat for Otis Birdsong's kids. Don't forget mm-hmm. that. He's in a, he's a Florida guy. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, what was I? And I, you know, you know how some fans can be kind of annoying. No. I'm that way as a Nets. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm that way as a Nets fan. Like. I get like Kevin Durant, Kyrie was out. No one came to the bubble. I was still so pissed off at them the way they were playing. Yeah. I was like, screw this team. None of them want to show up. None of this team cares. This team's a joke. Like that's the way the, a lot of people are. The opposite of me, Giants fan, is how I am as a Nets fan. Where it's oh, like, oh, funny. this team sucks. We're never going to change. That's how. <laughs> that's. And then we get Steve Nash, and I t- totally buy back in. So hey, hey, before you take the next question, what uh, you fill me in a little bit? What what's the money for? The money for? Yeah, what's the money when they give you money? When they give oh, you five bucks or whatever? Well, they're just donating to the chat, and then it shows up on – and then so it just, like, catch it comes up to the top of my thing. So I make sure to answer those questions. No, but I'm saying, what is, what's it for? For the ch- for the chat itself, for Talking Giants, for, for charity? What's it for? Well, it ain't for charity. What if I look like giving money away? No, it's, 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 for, it's, for, it's, for, it's for the Talking Giants. It goes to John Boy Media. So, um, like, when you, you know, you're giving out, because you guys are you guys are really cool. You're giving out bumper stickers and stickers and this and that. It's for stuff like that? Yeah, I, I mean, basically, well, I'm full-time now, no big deal. So, they pay me. So, I'm having this all go to them. And then that's how we get Justin, you know, on board and stuff. You know what? You know what? Put me down for a 20 spot. I like it. I like it. Um, Put me down for that. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. I know, you know. Hey, look, I'm a Twitter guy. I'm an Instagram guy, uh, you know, a Facebook guy, whatever. I'm not all this crap, but put me We're down. We're new to me. this. Honestly, it's crazy, Joe. We didn't do any YouTube last year, and we barely did any. Bef- like, we did some stuff before the draft, you know, with, um, with you know, uh, you know, um, rest in peace. But Anthony, um, and yeah. we started, we just recently started getting into YouTube. Honestly, man, these guys are the most diehards. 
they we've seen the growth in other things. They're the ones who share it. It's, we see, like honestly, it's going to be our money maker. It's crazy, and we just didn't do it last year. And it's and it's become our it's becoming our money. It's because you put the ad. Like we get you know ads on the podcast and stuff. Hey, I, I'm giving you I'm giving you a heads up now. Not only I, I saw it, you posted that today. I thought it was hilarious. Not only am I going to start it, but when I know that you're coming on at like twelve, I'm coming on eleven fifty five. I like just it. Want to let you know. I'll let I'll let you do it. I'll let you do it, and then I'll just right, go I off on it. you. I'll go off on you, and the people are like, well, <laughs> why are you getting so mad about this? And it's like, you know what? This probably was the worst thing for me to get mad about because, like, they don't realize this is the fiftieth time it's happened. They're just it's sitting okay. one time it's, and me going crazy. And, and it's it's okay that you got mad, especially now that it's your main. If it wasn't your main, you wouldn't. Look, look, I'm an athletic director. You know what I mean? Like, this is not my main. You know, the Giants is it's a second job for yep. me. So if it was my main, yeah, I'd be I'd be hardcore as well. I really would be. Yeah, yeah, it's been weird, man, doing this full time. You know I me. Mean? I I like to be. I, I think we talked before I, I um made the switch. Yeah. I like being outside, man. And I got to in season. I'm inside, but I'm gonna have to find ways to get outside and uh, you know, do my ex. I like do my exercise outside or or something because you can't, you can't be like a side pool boy. I do a little bit, but that's not enough to get get me. You know. I sh- I still yeah. do like eight or nine on my own on the side, but that ain't en- that ain't enough for me to be outside. I got so like what I've been doing on Saturdays is I'll go out to the beach and I'll just be in the I'll just fry myself. Like all right, that's enough tan for the week. <laughs> Brutal. You don't have, you don't you're not out there with like no banana hammock or anything. Are you no, bro? no. What do I look like? What do I look like? I'm the. Huh. One, yeah, I bet you do that. You probably just won't tell anybody, but that is something that you would do. I got. I got that boar rat. You know that one piece coming all the way up. Over I can see you being in Aruba, long hair with a banana hammock, and just pulling all the women. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do we got? Uh, this, this certainly took a turn. My, hey, yeah. Zona, Zona, Zona. 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 I like love those guys. Yeah. Dude, OC said something a couple days ago about the game growing international. And maybe it's just because – maybe it's more so the Giants because it is the New York market. Yep. International is some of our earliest fans that were doing our first mailbags. They're some of our yes. most loyal fans. I mean, I, I'm blown away at how many, like, loyal supporter fans that will stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning on the other side to, like, stay up and chat with us and stuff. Like, it's crazy yeah. how much the game is going international and most mostly the Giants. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you a quick story, Bobby. Uh, uh a couple of years ago, um, I had this guy reach out to me 20 times a week. He was uh, uh, Australian. And I decided that I was going to send him a care package just for the hell of it. Like, you know, all the stuff for my softball game, a couple of hats, socks, a jersey, T-shirts, a bobblehead. I think I put together a really nice just bunch of stuff. And I mailed it out to him. It took like a month. But anyway, the guy videoed opening it with his his two kids and his wife and like crying you know like <laughs> like cr- like legit legit crying and the greatest part about the story was he was like listen there's a bunch of giant fans here we are going to take up a collection and fly you here just to hang out for like a weekend and i'm like well first of all it'll take a weekend to get there so I'm not just, not just coming out there for the weekend. And uh, just the sole fact that he wanted to do that. So I, I so agree with you. It's one of my favorite stories. That's why I just told it. But uh, I agree with you that the Giant fans, and I'm sure all sports teams ha- have them, the Giant fans all over the world are amazing. The, uh, you know, from Mexico to you, and we're Brazil to yeah. Australia. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. Yeah, especially the Zona Sagantas guys. Those guys are great. Those guys are really good. Speaking of big time supporters, we got Buddy Brown, aka Mr. Brownstone, aka Mr. J Rock. Thank you for the donation. He's probably our biggest supporter. He says eleven and five, baby, which I know me but, and you both jump on that train. But first of all, buddy, next week you could say ten. The week after that, you could say nine. The week after that, you could say eight. I'm on board with you no matter what. People get people get mad. Like last year, remember before the Green Bay game, because the NFC East was so bad, we were still mathematically in it. And I just like I laid it out. Like this is what ha- needs to happen for us to make the playoffs. <laughs> and I just started tweeting um win out or whatever. And people like actually got mad at me. It's like you can you clearly see that I'm just joking and having like a fun time. Like 
we only get 16 of these a year. Let me have some fun with them. And and you know what? See, see what you just said. First of all, when you start doing the numbers on mathematically in it, I freaking love you guys. That that's my heart because I'm like still in it. That actually I love. So I can't even knock that. I love that. But that's my whole point year in and year out. Guys, I don't wait six to eight months for two months of football. I can't do that. It's not in me. Football is the most, it's the magical sport. It's my favorite. I'm not going to start talking about the draft. I already am. I'm not going to start talking about the draft the third week into the season. I don't understand that. I don't know why we do that. And yeah, I'm, I'm wrapped up in it too because it's social media and it brings it out of you. And like you said before, I mean, you know, we need to wait until it plays out. You yeah, play he, to he, win. Not you to play draft. to win, not the draft. I agree. I but can't. I can't stand the like, like people got like when we had like when uh, we beat Washington in Week 16. I get like if they would have lost, I wouldn't have been bummed out because you know because of Chase Young. Chase Young. But I was also like, I just watched our rookie QB throw five touchdowns. Like, can I? Yes. Like, I enjoy that. I enjoy yes. watching that happen. So yeah, like, I, I I go back on that as well. I know it's the Chase Young game, and I agree with you. I wouldn't have been upset. But I liked the victory. And that 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 says something for the guys. You know, I'm not going to bring up culture. I'm not going to say culture. But it, it does something in that locker room. You don't play to lose your games. And by the way, good luck getting 53 guys to tank. They're professionals. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they're fighting for their jobs and their contracts. And every snap matters. You know, every snap um, matters. That's what so I like, want. Like, that like for the Washington. Every snap matters. All right. Well, we'll do. That's we will it. do that. Every we will do that. Every snap matters. Every snap matters. I like that. And it was like, like Case Keenum is like when he was Washington. It's like, why would he do bad on purpose? He's trying to get a backup job somewhere. Like, correct. If he doesn't, if he comes out and plays horrible, he may that may be like the last impression teams get, and they're like, this guy's not even worth a backup. He's done. He's done in the league. He does it, and then he goes to Cleveland. Where arguably he's the best QB um in that in on that team. I mean he's not he's not, he's not better than Alex Tanny who's still out there. <laughs> yeah, Al- Dude, we made so many Alex Tanny jokes that it actually hurt me when he left. It actually hurt. I, like, I, 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 I truly do miss him. <laughs> I tried getting a hold of him out. Do you do you have any Alex Tanny I, connection? I, I do. You gotta. I've never asked you for a connection. You gotta give me the Alex Tanny connection. All right, I I, I will have to hook that one up. I really will. Okay, all right, because I, I like I said, I don't like asking people for hey, hook me up with this. I will be blunt, and I need I need you to hook me up with Alex. <laughs> Danny. That's awesome. <laughs> um, Great. Austin Mack. All right, so we're at. We'll, we'll go five more minutes. How many snaps do you think Austin Mack will get? You don't have to answer how many snaps. What do you think about Austin Mack? First of all, I love that you said Austin Smack. That's his new name too, and I want a I t-shirt know. on that too. Um, if, uh, I was always going to say if Devontae Downs was good, he's not. Yeah. And if you got to turn, I was just waiting for him to get like a stop on fourth down. So I call him Devontae Turnover on Downs. But clearly he's not good enough to do that. Sounds great. Oh, you froze for a second. Hold on. No, you, you froze, froze for, for a second. second. What did you say? What was the shirt? Oh, yeah. I was, was going to say Devontae Turnover on Downs, but he, that, he never he never did that. No, oh, that's too bad. That sucked. No, he, did, he didn't pan out too well. Oh, ah, no. so Austin Mack. Um, surprised he's not drafted. Say it again. I'm surprised he wasn't drafted. Yeah, there's a lot of wide receivers. I, I I didn't really know much about him beforehand. Um, I can, I can't wait to see who he is. But I also like how many times have we done this? You know, with undrafted Correct. guys. You know, Correct. like I can't wait to see who he is, and maybe he does turn this on, but. I've gotten I get excited about undrafted free agent guys. I do. Like that's part of being a fan. I try and find out what they're good at. Um, but like I said, if he's worse than Damian Ratley, I'm not gonna be surprised, you know. Uh look, I think that I think he's gonna have four balls thrown to him. Um, and I think he's gonna have three receptions. I can dig it. I can dig it. That's not that's not a that's not a hot take. That's not a hot take. And, I like it. No, no, no. And I think he's going to have fifty yards. There we go. Honestly, 
if we're going to be running all these contested catches and short routes, he's the perfect guy for it. Um, all right, so hold on. Hold on. I want to talk to you about that real quick. Uh, you started posting some video, and thank you for that because even though I watch it and I break it down because for me, and I break it down because I coached, I was very excited for, for Gary. I thought not, not as an offensive, not as a coach, as an offensive coordinator. Um, I, I thought that the Giants best coach for Daniel Jones, they fired. I think Pat Sherman was the best for Daniel Jones, in my opinion. Um, not the best coach, the best coach for Daniel Jones. Yeah. And I thought that JG was going to come here, um, and, and, and put together this misdirection offense, these, these wide receiver routes. I don't know that had his wide receivers mega open and, and the running plays left and right for Zeke. And now I'm just thinking, wow, was his wide receivers that good? Is, is, is the blocking just that much better in Dallas? Because JG has not shown me shit. No, no. I, everyone who's watching this knows how much, what I think of Garrett and I'm a patient person. You know, I, I get in trouble for too much patience. You mentioned Shermer. You should break out the Shermer game um, for or the Shermer jersey for a game this year. I, you know what? I, it's right here, bro. Don't dare me. It's right here. You, if things get bad, like real bad, you're like worse than what we should. You should be like y'all. I remember people being like, like, like cursing at you for wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan State Center. I remember people cursing you for wearing that. Yeah. Being like, I no, you this guy's I, a scumbag because he likes yeah. Pat. He liked Pat Shermer. Yeah, you know, you know, it's it's funny because I used to battle with this one guy uh, that said you need to stop going to games because ever since you were going, they they don't win. I'm like dickhead. I've been going for over 20 years to both home and away. 40 years at home. Shut up. Yeah, people are wild. People are wild. So we'll finish up. I'll, I'll answer this because I love Ruben. Uh, Jonas Gons, he said, guys, what do you think is the biggest hole in the team? Wide receiver one, linebacker two, or cornerback two? I'll let you answer this. That's a, a great question, by the way. I'm definitely going wide receiver one. Yeah. Um, there are I, – I, I watch Daniel Jones, and, you know, I feel for him. I could make, I could make arguments for his other – uh, questions in regards to the linebacker or the quarterback spot, but I believe both are okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not even giving an okay to the wide receivers. They're just they're just with with Shep being hurt, Tate not not playing up to par. Actually, he doesn't even get enough plays anymore. To be honest with you, he almost has a diminished role. Yeah. Um, and after that, there's just just no one to throw to. Um, and I don't mean that. I'm, I'm not even meaning that as any kind of a disrespect. There's just no, no wide receiver one, and that's a problem. Yeah, I agree. I do think this offense could be a lot better with the players that are on it, but I do agree a wide receiver one changes some things for whoever quarterback is, whether we get someone in free agency or the draft. Wide receiver one, it just changes things. It, cha- it makes things easier on everybody else. And I, you know, I was big on draft lift tackle because we need like. That need that blind side need to be taken care of. Obviously, there's been some struggles, but it hasn't been as bad as last year's Solder. People, I hate I hate bashing Solder because I honestly think he was like the best human being on the team. Like I like and you know what everything that his family's going through. So I hate talking badly about him, but people do forget how bad he was. Um, and where Jones like it's you're not worried about Jones getting lit up every play. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's getting he's getting pressure, but you're not worried about him just getting smacked like he did last year. Is Solder back? No, is, because is we Thomas, signed Logan is Ryan. Thomas, is because Tom- we signed Logan Ryan, no. Is Thomas going to the right side? Not unless they draft that kid from Oregon. Sewell. Is Sewell going to be your left tackle? I don't know enough about him. Everyone says he's good, so I'll, you know, I'll trust them for now. So I would – the offensive line in me would be like, yes, I get another offensive line to look at – lineman to look at. But I do think wide receiver is a bigger need than that right now. And so I, let me let me let me ask you something. You're sitting on the clock at five. Both guys are there. 
Wide receiver one, left tackle one. What are you picking? Wide receiver. I like the kid from LSU a lot. I love that Every, kid. everybody. Everybody does, and he's the number one wide receiver. So yeah, he would be the number one. So wow, you would go. You would go wide receiver. I'd go. I'd go. Not sexy pick again. I. You know what? You know what? We can't even say that because it's not fair. It's not fair because your draft your draft board changes after free agency, and and everybody yeah. jumps to go. Everybody jumps to go say, "I want him. I want him. I want him." But if you work your magic in free agency. It literally sets up who you really want. At the end. I don't know. We'll have a new general manager that's going to be picking. So, yeah, yeah. And I think when we signed Blake Martinez last year, it should have been a sign like, "Hey, we're not going to be drafting Isaiah Simmons." <laughs> you think? <laughs> um, all right, we got to roll. Um, we're going to be recording our watch. Dude, okay. So, anyways, patreoncom slash talking giants, two dollars a month. If you guys want to come, we're going to record our preview podcast. So we've been doing interviews for the pregame shows um, and this this podcast and they were Believe Podcast. They're new. They have a lot right. of players on it. So last week we interviewed Orlando Skandrick and he player interviews can be pretty boring. He might have been the most boring I've ever done. Um, brutal. This sort of week like for the play. <laughs> yeah. And I started it off like I like wanted the trash talk just to lighten it up. I was like, hey, you remember in 2011, that time when the Giants beat the Cowboys twice in the last four games and won the division one Super Bowl? And he didn't think it was funny. He was like, yeah, I do remember that. That was the year Victor Cruz. It's like, yeah, trust me, dude. I remember that. I wasn't asking if you actually remembered. <laughs> so we had Fred Smoot on. So it's a reason to listen to it tomorrow. He Fred was Smoot? He's hilarious. He's a great trash talker. We are trash talking back and forth. He was a good one. So even if you don't do the um, – so if, if you haven't checked out our podcast, check it out in the morning just for the Fred Smoot interview. It was pretty fun. That's awesome. That's all. Uh, hey, who do you got? You got you got Landon Collins or Caden Smith this time around? Caden, even though he hasn't been playing, that's how I finished <laughs> it off because he was he was trash. I don't mean to give it away. I'll, I won't give it away. I'll say yeah, he was trash talking Jones, and I I I went to Landon Collins to finish it off. <laughs> that's great. Oh man! All right, man. Everyone knows where to find you at license play. It, yeah. actually, it is at license play guy. All that good stuff, man. Thanks for uh, giving me your time, man. You're always a, a blast. Now, hey, listen, I love what you guys do. Put me down for a 20 spot. I love talking Giants. Keep it up. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. No doubt.